Spring Game presented by Schlotzky's. We are live at Daryl K. Royal, Texas Memorial Stadium. The sun has come out. Charlie Strong out for his second season, his second spree game here in Austin. We take a look at his first year. The Longhorns went six and seven overall. As we take a look at 2014, let's start it off pretty good. At least a win against North Texas, although David Ash, his final game as a Longhorn, suffering yet another concussion. Longhorns played well, but lost the Red River rivalry to move to two and four. Worst start since 1956. Won three straight, got pretty hot at Texas Tech. Big win against West Virginia, then in Stillwater, so the Horns became bowl eligible. But then they slipped again. Lost their final two games by a combined 79 to 17. Longhorns looking for better things this year. Have fun, y'all. Well, welcome inside the booth. Great timing. Eyes of Texas just finished. Kevin Dunn alongside former Texas defensive back Ahmad Brooks. A.B., it's good to have football back here. You we can tell feel me. the excitement. <laughs> Obviously, these Texas fans, they know about that 6-7 and seven season. Some optimism, though. You have a top-10 recruiting class. Where is the state of this program right now? Well, I thought it was obvious last year that the Charlie Strong culture was implemented. And when you saw um, player dismissals early on in the season for guys that, frankly, just weren't living up to the expectations that this coaching staff has brought into the program. Then you move it forward. You saw a Texas team that struggled late in the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. Second half play was abysmal at times. And a team that could have won some close games and maybe even bumped that win total up three or four times. So I think you saw a team that was on the brink. Today is another step moving forward to try to put all those pieces together and close out what the Charlie Strong culture will look like here at Texas. Yeah, Charlie talked to us on Thursday and said, man, that UCLA game, that Oklahoma game, we felt like we had them and it would have been big, really would have changed the season. Well, the season, 2015 season, a lot of people will be looking at quarterbacks, and that'll be sure obviously will. a huge storyline here. Tyrone Swoops struggled at times last season. He'll be the junior. Gerard Hurd, what are you looking for from both these guys today? Competition. I want to see what you're about to see here with Tyrone Swoops. Some excitement, playmaking abilities. I thought he did some things last year that gives me a belief that this guy could be the starter going into this year, but he's got to be consistent. And speaking of consistency, this is how Gerard Hurd will close the gap. He'll do exactly what he did at Denton Geyer win football games. That's all the coaching staff is concerned about, a good leader who can come out here, have a presence in this pocket, and make sure he does that right there, run the football, and get in the end zone. See what both these guys did in high school. Tyrone at White Wright, he's got more experience. Gerard had a great career at Denton Geyer. Their head coach is downstairs with the third member of our team, Jane Slater. Thanks, guys. Well, Coach Charlie Strong here with me now. And, Coach, one of the more intriguing position battles heading into the spring is this quarterback position. When individual strengths separate Tyrone Swoops and Gerard Hurd? Well, you look at him, it's just two different players. Tyrone's big and physical, and Gerard is smaller, but he's a guy that can use his speed and then has done a great job this past week of just throwing the ball very well. And we're going to see them both in this new up-tempo offense. What do you hope fans get out of it since this will be their first look? Well, it's more than anything, you know what, it's been our first look since the bowl game and just hope that we can come out today, execute and have fun. All right, a lot of teams every year lose players to either graduation or the draft. You're losing six starters on defense. How does that affect game planning going into the season, knowing that you've got those holes to fill? Well, what's been good about this spring, we've been able to just locate some guys and see if they can fit into what we're trying to get accomplished. And, you know, you do lose six guys, but a lot of guys that we lost last season, we're going to be able to get back also. So maybe that can add some depth to some of the losses. All right, appreciate it, Coach. And he's still wearing the mock turtleneck, even at the spring game. I love that about you, Coach. Guys, back up to you. Jane, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, kind of <laughs> humid, but, of course, Charlie's going to do that. You look at Vance Bedford and this Texas defense. They lose six guys, and you've said, at practice, they're, they don't have enough bodies right now. Yeah, it's very difficult for Strong and Vance Bedford to get a gauge on what type of depth and talent they have on this roster because guys have been banged up. And so what I will say is, yes, you discover some gems, but this is also supposed to be a time where guys like Duke Thomas get in and can get valuable reps that will help improve their game and put all the piece together. So it's been a struggle, but give this Texas staff credit. They managed to hold it together up until the spring game. It was a really good defense last year, led the Big 12 in total defense, also sacks. They do lose six of the seven leading tacklers. Dylan Haynes is back, will be wearing 14. And Hassan Ridgeway, they're expecting big things in the middle. Here are some keys for Vance Bedford. We talked with Vance on Thursday, had a nice long talk, and well, Ahmad, as a defensive guy, all four of these don't shock you, do they? Not at all. And, and you know, most defenses try this, and I thought Texas did a 
a decent job last year of implementing these types of keys. Limit the big plays, tackle well in space. That's what football is about. Play fast and play without inhibition. Go out and make some plays, and last but not least, cause turnovers. The best defenses in the country know how to create takeaways. All right, let's get this thing underway. 2015 Orange and White Spring Game. Tyrone swoops under center. Not under center, shotgun, I should say. And passes there right away. Dorian Leonard drops it. Leonard, one of those guys the coaching staff is hoping can make some plays after the catch as we take a look at Tyrone Swoops. Last year, 58% over 2,400 yards, 13 touchdowns. They want to clean up the 11 interceptions. Shotgun again, play action. And he has his man, Ja'Cory Warwick, a name that popped up quickly in the meeting Thursday. Well, just, just from watching this offense now, you see Tyrone Suits get on the move, a little play action there to get him outside of the pocket. Nice timing there, something that we didn't see all that uh, often out of Tyrone Suits a season ago. You see the hurry up offense, trips on the near side. And I think Gray tackled. Well, Texas fans wanted to see Jonathan Gray. They also wanted to see the guy who made the tackle, Malik Jefferson, a huge recruit and a big guy for Texas to get an early enrollee. play. Nice move by Jonathan Gray. Made a guy miss. He talked about the Achilles. He feels like he just is going to be a lot quicker this year. He'd be 100%. And they're thinning out that box by spreading this offense out, and that's what you see. It's a thin box right now. It's only six guys in the box. Move to the left, and could have been dangerous. Jordan Strickland was a defensive back. Yeah, Dorian Leonard has certainly um, turned some heads this spring. Number 89, um, a sophomore wide receiver, got limited action a season ago, but he's um, starting today at this X position. You saw Tyrone go to him twice already today. They've really worked some chemistry throughout the spring. Trips to the left side. Another completion. This time to Amani Foreman. Foreman is a sophomore from Texas City. Texas loses. Jackson Shipley, John Harris, talented guys. Showing blitz, they are going to come. Flag is down, and it's through the hands of the intended receiver. Number 31 defense. The five yard penalty results in the first down. Jason Hall, defensive back, is offsides. Here are the rules for the orange and white scrimmage. First team offense is Texas. Second team offense, the Longhorns. Points are awarded to the opposite team for a defensive touchdown. Fair catches on all punts, no kickoffs, no contact on the quarterback. I know you don't like that, Ahmad. <laughs> That's no surprise. You only got two of them. There's Dorian Leonard. And We'll also decide the second half clock, seeing how the first half goes. Leonard, one of those guys, maybe with the body type, to a guy who could replace John Harris and what he was able to do. I agree. They play the same position. And another thing you should notice is how this Texas offense is trying to get the ball outside the numbers with their throws. Work the, work the open field. John, nice job there. Yeah, not Jonathan Gray. They decided to go and put Deontay Foreman in there. Bigger back. Really plan to use both guys, De La Torre leading. Well, and that was designed to go inside, as you saw there on the replay, but he's not known for being a guy to hit outside, but when you can add that to your game, coaches really like that. The middle. Dante Foreman again. Foreman mentioned his brother, Armani. He's a sophomore also from Texas City. 6'2", 231 pounder, a bigger back. Get another look, and well, Malik Jefferson, a tackle for a loss, and you can hear, you can hear the crowd enjoying that. Yeah, just watch him in the middle of the field. He, this is what they brought this young man in for. He, he got a better jump than anybody on that side of the ball, and just beat them to the football. There was nowhere Foreman could run because 46 Malik Jefferson was all in his face. Freshman from Mesquite, Texas, just enrolled. Swoops. 
Now you can't hit the quarterback, but Tyrone showing some athletic ability. Does he get in? And they're going to give it to him. Touchdown, Texas. I think Malik maybe would have had an angle in game situation there. Well, and you know, and I'll say this too. That was a, a very fine drive. It, you look at the amount of plays that they had here. It, it just really wore down the defense. But not a lot of movement up front. They decided to bring four. Tyrone Soup's doing an excellent job of um, showing that he can stay in the pocket, work within the fines, go through his reads, and last but not least, make a play with his feet. That was something that last year, Tyrone Soup's, when he did, really helped this team put them in a better position to win more football games. Nick Rose. He wants to see Nick more consistent. Play is there. Well, Tyrone Swoops look good. Gerard Hurd, you're up. Texas football on Longhorn Network is presented by Schlotsky's. We're lots better. And in part by the new Chevy Silverado, official truck of the Texas Longhorns. Tyrone Swoops with a 14-yard touchdown run. Texas with an 11-play, 65-yard scoring drive at eight up, three minutes. Two explosive plays for Texas, including that 14-yard run. All right, it's up to Gerard Hurd now. He's going to go ahead and lead the Horns. Freshman, retro freshman quarterback from Denton Geyer. Numbers at Denton Geyer were really impressive. Little trips again. And off Duke Catalan. Taken down by Peter Jenkins. Duke's a redshirt freshman from Houston. And Eisenhower. They get him on the move, going left, and the pass is complete. Tell you what, that was an excellent block from the young running back, Duke Catalan, doing a nice job. You'll see him here on this edge come off in the chip right there on Shiro Davis, allowing Gerard Hurd to get his shoulders turned and to get his body into that throw. Nice play there for the Texas offense. Back to the hurry up. This time going to hand it off to Duke. He's taken down by Hassan Ridgeway. Things expected from the big man. Vance said, once he just gets mean and really gets it, watch out. They're trying to work the middle, Jason Hall, trying to help out Peter Jenkins, who started it. Jason Hall is a guy who had a really breakout year. What does he need to improve on as a secondary guy? I think I think his coverage skills are always things that it can improve. He's known to be a bruiser. He can balance out his game by, by being a more reliable cover guy. But watch out. Off the corner comes Bonnie. Does get it off. Ball's on the ground. But offense does recover. But 24 John Bonnie is a guy who was We've heard a lot of good things. He was coming off quickly. Yeah, I, I really like this kid. I like his demeanor. I like his instincts there in the inside. And he's played a lot of the slot um, this spring, which he's gained some valuable reps at coverage, but also learning to uh, the, read his run pass keys and make a play. The throw out to Templin. High with his second catch in this drive. Able to get some yak. Templin from Grand Prairie. Kevin, I alluded to it earlier. With this pace that the offense is seeing, uh, th that the defense is seeing, you can tell how hard it is to create substitutions, and you can get worn down on a, on a drive that goes over seven plays. Hurd has his guy again. A nice little connection between Templin and Hurd. Well, and I think the success that they've had running the football here is what happened. Excellent protection up front. I mean, he had a clean pocket, enough time to get into his throw, and he threw that seven route exactly in the location you want to, away from the DBs and only where your wide receiver can make a catch. The flats as his guy, but a quick tackle by Bonnie. Let's go to that last throw, Bob. Yeah, I mean, 
he knows that this is coming. You see him there, his eyes immediately go. It looked like this was his second read. He does a nice job of looking off the defensive back and then finds that very small window. This is where his game has to develop. He's an excellent runner. We'll see him here in a second, but he has to be able to throw the football to back defenses and get them out of the box. Motion to the right side. We'll hand it off. Not much room up the middle there. We'll blow the whistle. Well, Sean Watson probably said it four or five, I don't know, six times in our meeting with him on Thursday. Got to stay on balance. Really talked about balance with Hurd, and that is really the key to his accuracy improving. Yeah, and that starts with footwork, according to Sean Watson, the man you just saw there. Sean Watson, quarterback coach, co offensive coordinator. Gerard going to take off now. He's got the wheels. He split him in practice last week, and he does it here. Yeah, these are off-schedule plays. You don't draw this up. This is what Gerard Hurd brings to the table, and this is why he's closed the gap on Tyrone Swoops over the last several weeks. Just a very instinctual play, and I think at this point, the strongest part of his game is with his legs. Mm -hmm. And if you're Gerard Hurd, you've got to get comfortable at this level. Um, that was against the number one defense, really wore them down. That was the first run. You saw him keep the football. I thought it was an excellent decision. Uh, but this is what this kid does. He's an off-schedule runner. And you just put the game plan in his hands and let him do magic. Seven here in Austin, orange-white spring game presented by Schlotzky. 6.22 to go here in the first quarter. Texas loses a lot of players to graduation, maybe even more to injury, who actually would be playing in this name as we take a look at the injured players that are out today. Ahmad, are you kidding me? This list to me is shocking that Charlie Strong to your right has been able to even execute spring practice. Those are some of your key contributors going into next season. Caleb Blewett, Desmond Jackson, uh, Derek Roberson, they really uh, feel like has a promising future here. Uh, that's a hard list to try to, to work around in spring ball. <laughs> a lot of defensive guys. As we head back to action here. Hand off up the middle. For more on the injuries, let's go down to the field and Jane Slater. As you guys mentioned, quite a few injuries in this team. Some of the more notable ones, Sherrod Evans, the senior corner, missed all of last year when he underwent an ACL tear. That kept him out for the season. Coach Charlie Strong said he really worked hard to get back out here. Then in a non-contact play in spring practice, he went down again. They're still holding out on the severity of it, though, but there was one report this week that say it could cost him this season as well. Checked with the coaching staff. They said they're still not ready to release an official timetable. Dalton Santos, his prognosis is a bit better. The senior linebacker was also injured in practice. He's gotten the ankle injury, had some surgery, and he's slated to return in mid-July. And finally, the guy they'd love to have back is offensive tackle Desmond Jackson. They call him the tank. He had that foot injury in last year's UCLA game. That kept him out last season, but he is expected back in time for fall camp. On offense, Marcus Johnson, the wide receiver, not playing today. That's because he hurt his knee in practice, said he's still a little sore, but he should be okay. So a lot of injuries to work through, guys. Jane, thank you very much. I'm glad Jane did that, too, because we're pre-show meeting. I thought, you you handled the injuries down there on the field. It's just a, it's a laundry list wow. and some important guys. She mentioned yep. Tank Jackson. It's unfortunate. What he can do to help out Hassan Ridgeway. They think that's going to be a great tandem in the middle. We saw Gerard Hurd using his legs again to move the sticks. Now he's going to try and do it with his arm. Well, not the prettiest throw, but it'll count. And guess who? DeJay Johnson. Wow. I'm more impressed with the mechanics out of 13 here. You'll see him. Watch him. He looks to his right. He looks off the safety just enough to get that window in there to DeJay Johnson. Look. They talked about this kid's balance. You see it there. He's getting into his throw. That back foot coming through. That was a very nice play. It was. Good spiral, too. It's something he had some problems with. What's going on there, buddy? Yeah, you lose contain there. And, and this is something that this Texas uh, staff, especially on the defensive side, this is the challenge that 13 brings. You've got to put another number on him. You've got to have somebody spy on him usually because of his athletic ability. And now as he continues to develop as a passer, you really are forced with every decision can't be a wrong one when you're playing against 13. Puna Ford in there at defensive tackle, 95. That's a name that's been talked about a lot, as has John Bonney, 24, who makes a tackle. 
you, do you see Bonnie making an open field tackle, something Vance Bedford talked about a lot? Do you see him being a nickel guy, a corner? Where do you see him fitting in? He just fights off a block there, and that was just pure hunger. <laughs> John Bonnie is trying to show people that he's ready to play. He's tired of watching from the sidelines, and he's saying, Coach, put me in. Third and inches, still in shotgun. Defense showing pressure off the edge, go right up the middle. It should be enough for a first down. It's Gaston Davis, junior from Clear Lake. Yeah, one of the the competitions that I'll be watching, the guys like Puna Ford taking on the interior line of this offense, which is pretty strong for Texas. Bird moving left. Tim Cole is going to get him down. Tim Cole, Peter Jenkins. Malik Jefferson, also a pretty good class of uh, freshman linebackers who will be coming in who aren't here like Jefferson, but man, some big shoes to fill in Steve Edmond and Jordan Hicks. Yeah, I mean, I, when you lose that type of leadership and that type of production, it, you're always giving, you're, you're, you're looking at the, the eight ball there. Yeah, I mean, you're behind the eight ball for sure. So these Texas, these Texas players now are challenged to come out here and try to improve. He's gonna come out, watch out. Bonnie just lights up. Davis. I'm not going to say I told you so, but this guy was a breakout player for me a couple of nights ago. On no, LA you told team. me. And here's why. <laughs> Watch his instinctual ability. I mean, you, you look at him at safety. He played up. He beats the block of DJ Johnson. Oh, and I mean, completely lays out the wide receiver. That's a big time pop. And that is when that is when a guy has completely locked in and says, you know what? I'm taking this job by the horns. Excellent play there from John Bonner. Once again, showing pressure as Bonnie's going to come off the edge. Quick little flip. It's Trenton Halfley. See some guys who may not see a lot in the fall. Part of that is due to injury, and part of that due is just not having a lot of depth in certain positions, yeah, it's whether it's injury fun. or not. Yeah, it's got to be fun for them, though. They work hard all season long as, as, as showing these Texas players looks from week in to week out. To be able to come out here and actually play in front of fans, I think it's a great gift for guys who work hard every day who may not always get the attention they deserve. It's well deserved. Third. Going to show those feet. All the way down to the 21, Bonnie makes the play. Yeah, there's nothing for it. Vance Bedford is barking on the sideline, but look, you bring the blitz, the guy gets out of sight of contain, and on fourth down makes a play with his feet. Yeah. I mean, those are the types of plays when competing for a job, look at the face of Vance Bedford. You have no answer for that. A guy that can buy time with his feet and extend plays are the hardest guys to defend. Got some great Vance rants coming up later in the game we're gonna show you. Uh, nowhere to go here, and Nashawn Hughes with a pretty hard shot and something to say. Yo, you hear about third downs being money downs, fourth downs here. I mean, you saw the blitz, nice pressure down to Puna Ford, and look how winded Shiro Davis and Hassan Ridgeway are chasing this guy down. The tempo of this offense, the pace of this offense, it wears you down. Kevin Dunham, Mott Brooks here. Tied at seven in the orange-white spring game. Seen a lot of spread look here. Ooh, Tim Cole. Tim Cole, Peter Jenkins, Nashawn Hughes. These guys look like they're, and John Bonney look like they're trying to prove something. Yeah, great energy, and, and Tim Cole is known to be a thumper. He took some false steps there, but he gets outside of the block of Rollerson, and I mean, plants the running back. Nice job of running his, his feet, keeping his pads active, and working those arms. Cole from Brenham. Three down look, although they bring Hughes, and Hughes able to get there, and another big time hit, this time by Dylan Haynes. Well, you like Nashawn Hughes yeah. a lot, and they're gonna use him in that Fox role. It's a three down look, but he's coming. Well, you see him there. He lines up outside, inside, that time bringing inside pressure through the B gap, and a, an excellent job of Nashawn Hughes just getting to the quarterback. He still is small enough and quick enough to get around offensive linemen, but his frame has now uh, put on some extra weight, which makes him heavy enough now to try to go out and stand up against the run. Nick Rose just sneaks in. He's got the leg. Charlie wants him to put it down the middle more. 
He doesn't care about 50 yarders. He wants those 40 and below to be money. Well, here are some key returners on offense for Texas. Of course, Tyrone Swoop started the final 12 games, 58% completion percentage. I mentioned you really want to clean up those 11 interceptions. Jonathan Gray coming off the Achilles. He hopes to be healthy in that extra year back his senior year. We saw DJ Johnson make a catch earlier. This guy's crucial about it. Yeah, I mean, he's he's got the potential to be that X factor and the guy that um, can change the feeling in a stadium in one touch of a play. And he'll do it behind a, a very a very experienced offensive line. Yeah, and an offensive line they feel like has a lot more depth. It was clearly one of the weak spots for Texas last year. And even Charlie, we said, is it chicken or egg? I go, I, you know, in terms of <laughs> Is it the offensive line or the quarterback place? It's kind of both, because yep. if you got a good offensive line, it's going to help the quarterback out, and obviously vice versa Very as Tyrone true. comes out. And Wickline, they're responsible um, for being a part of this Oklahoma State spread offense, and what it does is it thins it out, and it puts fewer guys in the box for his offensive lineman to block. Shotgun every time, trips a majority of the time. He's going to pull it and keep it. There were times when he was a decisive runner. He was an effective runner. Oklahoma, the first half, really Oklahoma the whole game. Then there were times where you just felt like it wasn't there. More to come on Tyrone and Gerard Hurd. We played a quarter here, 10-7 Longhorns. Question, is what about the quarterbacks? And here you have a 13, a guy that we haven't seen much of, Gerard Hurd, buying time with his feet extending plays. That was on a fourth down for a first down. Here, looking off the safety, Dylan Haynes and finding the Jay Johnson in the middle of the field. And this is what Texas fans come to LHN to watch. Gerard Hurd getting into the end zone. And look at these numbers here. It's been very impressive. One of the knocks and question marks going into the year was how about his passing game? Nine of 10, 66 yards, no interceptions. He's protected the football, got a touchdown. That's a good outing there for, for the young guy trying to make a move to become Texas starting quarterback. People tuning in right now to see 13, see how he would look, nine of 10 so far. Tyrone swoops. Play action, oh. Tried to thread the needle. Flag is down, I think that may be pass interference as they were looking for Foreman. Pass interference, number 36, defense, 15-yard penalty, first out. Dylan Holt. Yeah, I like the decision here. It looks like a package, a package play where Tyrone Swoops could decide, hand it off there or pass, but he saw the pass uh, interference, and though the ball was still thrown in the right location. Pump fake, now going to try and go deep. Ball was there, Dorian Leonard not able to make the play. And that ball was thrown on the money. That's where you want to throw it outside the numbers over his left hand shoulder. And this is just perfect. You see him here, it's a double move. The nice clutch play trying to get the defense to suck in. He got the one-on-one -on -one opportunity he wanted there with Dorian and he just couldn't bring it in. But I like, this is where his game is good. The deep ball there, one of the best deep balls that I've seen him throw this evening. Really nice, good coverage by Jordan Strickland. As Duke Catalan getting some action here. Duke, another one of those big backs. We talked about Deontay Foreman. Duke comes in at 5'10", 202. But running some bigger boys here. And that'll be the question mark with Duke Catalan. Is he big enough to run in between the tackles and make a difference? He's got exceptional speed to get outside the tackles, but can he be a, a, an every down runner, if you will, one that the coaching staff can rely on on first and second down when you're trying to pound the ball up the middle? Fourth and five. Becker will let this one go. You have to have fair catches, but you got to catch it. DeJay Johnson not able to make the play. We'll see how they rule that. For DeJay Johnson to make a tremendous impact in his senior season, 
he's got to be able to become a reliable catcher like Jackson Shipley was, Quandre Diggs, because this is why coaches won't put him back there. We know he's electric when he has the football in his hands, i.e. two years ago at Oklahoma when he makes a, pl a play that completely changes the course of the game. I I've been impressed with what the coaches have said about him. He's finally starting to get the off-the-field stuff together. We know he was suspended last season. I hope that this is a good success story, and this offense is going to have to work really hard to find unique ways to get him involved in the ball game. But Jay Johnson has done enough, in my opinion, now to finally get the right to be an option out here for this Texas team so Texas fans can finally see him um, reach his full potential. John Watson, Joe Wickline, and Jeff Trailer, Jay Norvell. The last two guys, new coaches. We'll get into them a little bit. And off, not much room. Jason Hall and Tim Cole there. Well, the Texas offensive line you mentioned that the coaching staff feels as if they're going to have more depth this year, but more competition. And I think that's going to help out Joe Wickline's unit. There is the longtime offensive line coach. A great job at Oklahoma State. Co-offensive coordinator here. Yeah, you're seeing the Hassan Ridgeway effect here now. I mean, he's completely taken on double teams and he's taken over this game. And um, I played with a guy here named Sean Rogers who has a very similar build, was an All-American here and a second round draft choice to the Detroit Lions. His body mold uh, reminds me of that, but can he be a player that can sustain drives with that type of size and do what he just did, get in the backfield and make plays? Third and eight. Coaching staff feels like he could be dominant. Just has to want to be. Nice play right there. I think that was 25. Antoine Davis. Bryson Eccles, I believe. Oh, Bryson Eccles, okay. No I, I saw the, I saw the yep. five. Yeah. Well, and the thing is with this kid is he's he's waited his turn. He's a junior. He played a little bit last year, and I thought the coaching staff um, paid a great tribute to him by saying, we're going to put you in here. We know you haven't played a whole lot of reps, but you've earned the right. Now, this spring, he's had to play so much because of the injuries at cornerback to Duke Thomas, Sherrod Evans, and so he's getting a chance to make some plays and so that fans will know who he is come 2015 football season. Yeah. Eccles and Antoine Davis were names that Vance Bedford said have really been able to use the extra reps. Well, a guy who's gotten extra reps is Hassan Ridgeway because there are so many defensive linemen that are out. But you see what he did last year. When he was balling, he was playing pretty well. Second on the team with six sacks. You mentioned Sean Rogers, tons of power. Yeah, and when he anchors in that middle, you can't move him, and that's what power is built on. Guys, that can be the anchor. Now, he's got the size. Just watch the distraction. He's taking on a double team, fights through the double team, and still makes a sack. And look at the motor here. Never giving up on a play. Boy, that's sexy now. I'm telling you, when you see a big boy <laughs> running like that all over the field, that's intimidating. And I, I just hope that in this year for Hassan Ridgeway, that he understands what Malcolm Brown did last year. This defense is going to be anchored on his ability to be a nose and be firm in the middle of the field. It's a sexy 320, huh? <laughs> yeah, no doubt about it. Well, it certainly is if you're Vance Bedford and Sean Watson liking this. Deontay Foreman. Those are like a bowling ball. Now, I, I know you DBs don't want to see him back there. <laughs> well, I did, but I mean, <laughs> there are some that don't, and here's why. You see them get in front of those pads, they're square. Uh, a guy that ran like that was Ricky Williams. He'd square those things up, and he was hard to tackle. We talk with Rick during the third quarter. One more look at that run. Man, for a guy his size, watch the breakaway speed. He gets the edge. That's the second time today that I've seen him get outside and make something happen. And there, he's just the bowling ball, as you said, Kevin, in the open field. And those DBs, they're worn down. You don't want to see Big 33 hitting that corner. I think that could have been a hold, but no call. We saw Taylor Doyle with a nice pull on that, too. He got a hold of Malik Jefferson on the long run by Foreman. And just watch it up front here. Nice job there by Alex Norman getting through. And Tyrone Swoop seeing it early. Um, and being able to buy time with his feet. Swoops. Well, the average drives today, if you're trying to really keep up with both quarterbacks, first three drives. Yeah, Bryce Control, number 91. You heard me talk about him earlier. He's really flashing some things that the coaches are excited about. And um, though he's a little smaller than Shiro Davis and giving up about 20 pounds, 
what you just saw there, his ability to get to the quarterback is a reason why he'll play on Saturdays this fall. And they did say not hit the quarterback, right? <laughs> Where's his? I hey, told I'm, you, it's I'm, accidental contact. Yeah. All right, it's accidental. I'm, I'm accidental going too fast, the 15th coach. time. <laughs> <laughs> Second and 10. Malik Jefferson coming after him, but it's going to be... They're going to give it to him at the nine. I thought Leonard may have bobbled that. Or excuse me, uh, Foreman. Yeah, that was great protection up front. I mean, look at the time in the pocket that Tyrone Swift has. And this is just an excellent thrown ball. And he got that one foot in. I don't know. That was debatable. But this tempo offense, look, it's already back out on the field. Not enough time to review. Right. And go back to him. That certainly was a catch. And the refs would have slowed that down if they would have thought that was a questionable call. So um, they didn't, and, and the game proceeds. The officials have had to adjust to the tempo like everyone else has. Foreman, tackled by Quincy Vassar, 92. The early enrollee, junior college guy. And he's gotten a lot of reps. How valuable is that for these kids that are able to get in and get that extra semester and get this spring game. Well, you, you learn how to become a student athlete. And here at the University of Texas, when it's equally as challenging in the classroom and, and trying to keep yourself eligible and excel in the classroom, it's a, just a great way to not have all the stuff that goes on during the season to, to kind of settle in and uh, be able to, to learn what it's like to be a student athlete at this wonderful university. Right, here we go, fourth and goal. Texas is going to go for it. Trips up top. Give it to the big boy, why not? Just falls in, touchdown Texas. Yeah, he's going to be the hammer this year, number 33, and you just see him here, they're going straight downhill. They say it's our guys versus yours, but I want you to understand something. And for the people at home, when I say that spreading out the field thins out the numbers, there was nearly a hat for hat there. So if a guy can just shield and hold his block off, it creates creases just naturally because you've minimized the numbers in the box. And so this spread offense, those are the things that can be beneficial um, when dialed up right by Sean Watson. Right in to a fine drive. Well, as Ahmad said, they're spreading them out, but they're still running right down the middle. Touchdown, Deontay Foreman. Welcome back to Austin, 14-10. Texas leading the Longhorns. Orange and white spring game. Second quarter action, 10-18 to go. Deontay Foreman with a great drive. Five rushes, 37 yards, and one touchdown, and was able to do that because of the big uglies in front of him. We take a look at the Texas offensive line. These are the starters in the bowl game. Well, they expect Cedric Flowers and Kent Perkins to definitely be starters, maybe Taylor Doyle as well. One thing they've said about Perkins is he's lost a lot of weight, but a young guy, an early enrollee, Connor Williams was a name that Sean Watson said is going to be a standout. Yeah, he's just got the attitude, uh, very aggressive in his approach to blocking. A little dump pass to Halfley. Trenton from Wichita Falls. Burn it. Rolling left in trouble, and we'll just go ahead and eat that one. And Cole will get credit for that. Yeah, two man route, excellent coverage there in the back end by Antoine Davis and Jason Hall, preventing the Jay Johnson and Lorenzo Joe from um, providing themselves as an option for Gerard Hurd. Kent Perkins, number 76. Sean Watson told us he's down to about 315. Was it about 345, 350? Feels like he's going to be a lot more agile. Sometimes offensive linemen, you want to get big to cover people up, but you still have to be athletic. Intercepted by Bryson Eccles. They want more turnovers and 
Well, that pass wasn't a great pass, but when it's there, you got to take it. Yeah, but he made his play, and there were oftentimes last year guys didn't come down with this play. Bryson Eccles exactly where he needs to be over Jake Oliver, over the top um, in zone coverage that way, and the pressure. You go back and you look at what was happening up front. Clearly, you can see John Bonney coming on a blitz from the nickelback position, and it was completely jammed up the middle. This is where a young quarterback has to show his poise and ability to pass. You'll see the blitz there coming down from the bottom from John Bonney. And then um, after you roll this, you'll see the pressure gets to him. Now, at what point does he recognize this? You got a five-man blitz with a six-guy adding. And sometime right there, you go to this option up top. He's covered up, but you take a chance on a one-on-one -on -one option, hoping that a big frame like Jake Oliver can win a ball against a smaller guy like Bryson Eccles. But give Eccles and this defense credit. They brought the pressure so that this uh, Texas offense will be forced to make a play or make a throw a football. They did, and Bryson Eccles comes away with the first pick of the spring game. 5'10", 181-pound junior <laughs> from DeSoto. That's a good feeling, huh? Yeah, it is. Little jet sweep. This is how they want to get DeJe involved. Nice tackle there. It's Johnny Singh. You see DeJe catch a ball, jet sweep, and also muck the punt. Second down and five. Quick throw. He's got his man Foreman. What's the biggest difference you see with Tyrone Swoops? That's next level. Sitting on the game they set with Vince Young last year, he thought that Tyrone Swoops was late on a lot of throws and sometimes spent too much time on the fake. That time, he gets the ball out and finds Foreman on the edges, which was perfect. Does it again right there. And Foreman's going to try and make something after it. Well, Charlie Strong and Sean Watson over and over Thursday. They said, we have to find someone who can just make a play on a five-yard hitch route. And on the flip side, what was Vance Bedford saying? Open field tackle. Tackles, because right. this offense is predicated on getting the ball outside. They almost threw that ball on the sideline. Literally, he was three or four yards away from being out of bounds. They're utilizing all of the field now in this new offense. Swoops able to get away from Cottrell. Well, let's get back to the offensive line a little bit. I know you love talking secondary and defense, but I'll get out of here. We got some different guys. Tristan Nicholson is 6'8", 317 pounders. We'll discuss whatever flag this is. But they've got, they feel like more bodies, maybe anywhere from 10 to 12. They did not have that depth a season ago. Yeah, they were struggling to find five guys that they felt comfortable with. And, you know, it was a revolving door at that offensive line week to week trying to game plan was tough. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 89 offense. That was number 89's first unsportsmanlike foul. 15-yard penalty. It's second out. Dorian Leonard. Yeah, and then you see him also come off the sideline. That's what happens. When you're a young player, sometimes your emotions get the best of you, and Dorian Leonard is going to play this year. He's done enough this spring, and um, what he's got to learn is to stay within the game. You see his coach there, Jay Norvell, putting his arm around him. He's a young guy, and this is where Norvell will make his money. How can he develop talent like that and make those guys impact players on Saturday? Jay, one of three new coaches on the staff. Wide receiver coach is the screen is blown up. Jay Norvell was known as a really, really good wide receiver coach with Baltimore, or excuse me, Indianapolis. I'm going old school Colts here, huh? <laughs> Marvin, yeah, Marvin Harrison. <laughs> and went to Oklahoma. You think Ryan Broyles, some of the really technically sound yep. receivers. That's what he's known for. He is a technician as a coach. Another interception. He just left it up there. And Dylan Bolt was there. There is a penalty down. We'll see if this is coming back. Now, let's see here. He tries to look the safety off by going to his left. And this ball here just, it was great timing uh, by Dylan Haynes, who has a, a great knack for Dylan finding Bolt. the football. Pardon me, Dylan Different Bolt. Different Dylan. We Thank got you. a lot of Dylans out and here. And speaking of Dylan Bolt, let me give him some props since I messed up his name. He's made plays like this all spring. So look for this guy to be a special teams contributor. Personal foul. Hands to the face. Number 93, defense. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. First down. It's Paul Boyette, Jr. Oh, my. 
you talk about a play that hurts, and you can see Charlie Strong there. Those are the plays when you get a takeaway, you're wearing down this offense. That was a long third down, and you make a play like that. Now, uh, he's had a fairly decent spring. They said he's continuing to be consistent, but those are the types of plays when coaches look back at the spring game. I'll be frank with you, they sometimes have less confidence in you as a player to do things right on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Whistles blow again as second quarter slowing down. Let's take a look at the hands to the faces. 93, Paul Boyette, working on Sed Flowers, 66. That's a good call. And yeah, that's tough, though, because Cedric Flowers being a smaller, squatty offensive guard, sometimes a larger player. Um, your hands are just naturally there, but at the or end of the day... Or you can slip and lose technique, leverage. Very true, but your technique just has to be flawless at this level in order um, to perform at a high level. First down and 10. That is a game situation. That would be a killer. Feel like you have to stop. That looks like this is going to be holding coming back. Duke Catalan showing some nice moves. They have to. Number 74, offense. Ten yard penalty. Replay, first down. Taylor Doyle. Doyle's going to play at right guard. Also, will play some center, depending on if Jake Rollerson really can beef up more. He had a problem anchoring last year. They like Rollerson if he can get the weight on. Yeah, and I like Taylor Doyle. I mean, they moved him from guard to center last year after Dominic Espinosa gets hurt. No complaints from this young man. And now he, he's really been a staple on the inside this spring, uh, the interior line. Pistol look across the middle. Another completion. Leonard again. Dorian Leonard from Longview, 6'3", 203-pounder. Lamont mentioned earlier, coaches are hoping that he can kind of replace that very valuable John Harris role of a year ago, a bigger receiver. Behind him, nice catch. Duke showing some hands. It was a good read, but once again, not the right ball. And so, if you're Tyrone Swoops, you've got a rhythm here. Nice rhythm on his throw. He stood tall in the pocket. You know, I'm stating the obvious here, but you've got to throw that ball out in front so Duke Catalan can utilize his speed and his quickness to turn that corner and beat the defender. Kevin Dunn, Ahmad Brooks here. Gerard Hurd, Charlie Strong looking on. It's Tyrone Swoops and the Texas team trying to score again. Pressure coming. Going deep. Does he have him? Yes! Touchdown, Dorian Leonard! Oh, my. No catch. Now they're bringing it back. Wow. Thought one official came over and gave it. Yeah, we got to see the replay on this thing, though. But Tyrone Swoops going once again to one-on-one -on -one coverage there on the backside, trying to take advantage of Logan Mills and the Dorian Leonard matchup. And from that angle, they're showing it there on the Jumbotron. You heard the fans' happy. reaction, but let's see. Uh, great timing once again on his throw. This is the second deep ball he's thrown to his left that has been on point. Guys, that looks like a touchdown to me. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, you'd have to have a different angle. But right here, it looks like he has control. He's inbounds. I'd call that a touchdown. Oh. And one official, you saw him start to raise his hands, and they came together as Nick Rose is going to try a long field goal. 53-yarder. Plenty of room to spare. Leg has never been his problem. Well, Dorian Leonard looks like he had one. But no go. Texas is still able to get on the board. Charlie Strong has quite an impressive resume. Notre Dame was a defensive line coach from 95 to 98. He and Lou Holtz were very close. South Carolina defensive coordinator, 99 to 02. Florida defensive coordinator won two national championships there and then turned around the Louisville program, including a Sugar Bowl win, hired at Texas on January 6, 2014. Now he is downstairs with Jane Slater. All right, Coach Strong, both quarterbacks putting up some scores on the scoreboard. How would you assess the quarterback play so far? You know, I really like it right now. You know, Tyrone's moving his group, and then uh, Gerard has came in, made some plays, and made it with his feet. 
but it's been fun and exciting just watching them. All right, for fans at home, they might notice that there is not a horn decal on any of these helmets. Can you tell me the story behind that? No, it's just all about earning it back, and uh, we just always talk about the pride and tradition in this program, and, and that helmet, it means a lot to us, and just making sure that they earn that logo. Wide receiver Marcus Johnson injured his knee in the scrimmage uh, earlier in spring practice, not playing here today, but how is that allowing other wide receivers to step up today? Well, you're watching Dorrance playing very well, and then the Jays came in, and Amani's made some plays. But you know, we're going to get uh, we'll get Johnson back. But it's just all about watching other guys go play, also now. Watching Vance Bedford, defensive coordinator, just barking like crazy at the guys over here. How would you assess the performance of defense today? Well, early we just had to get adjusted because they moved the ball on both uh, the defenses, and then once we got adjusted, now they're selling in and making some plays. All right, thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Guys, back to you. Jane, thank you. Rod Hurd misses on that. Third in 18. What'd you take out of that? Well, I, the fact that he's liking the quarterback play. You know, we had an opportunity to sit down and talk to Charlie Strong, and we asked him, has he ruled out the possibility of playing both of these guys during the season? He's very adamant about it that he, he expects to see both of these guys play at some point in the season. So the fact that you're getting good competition, I believe, is helping these two guys uh, produce more on the film, perform better. And I think you're seeing that right now. Uh, some friendly competition is always good, uh, and especially under this type of scrutiny when you're the quarterback at the University of Texas. 18 screen. Watch out. Ball's on the ground. DeJay Johnson just got popped. And now here comes... Texas, they're gonna try and bring this all the way in, and yes, they will. Number 35, Edwin Freeman, the linebacker, and I think Malik Jefferson's the one who just drilled DeJay Johnson. Well, when you hear that this kid is fast, this is what it translates to on the football field. Look, he was coming on a blitz. He comes back on a bubble screen and makes a play. Listen, if you're watching at home, you don't make plays like that as a freshman, but when you're Malik Jefferson, one of the most highly touted um, defenders in the country coming out this year, that's how you make a name for yourself. It was a forceful, physical hit that leads to points on defense. Outstanding play by Malik Jefferson. And, and also, the young guy, Edwin Freeman, yeah. who we're hearing some good things about, has the awareness to scoop and score. He was a safety and kind of... He's a tweener. I like him. He's kind of moved into the linebacker role because he's gotten so big and strong. You saw him scoop that up. John Bonney tried to get it. But what a play by Malik Jefferson as Nick Rose able indeed to kick it through. Well, wow. Malik was thought to be a heavy Texas A&M lean for a long time. From Mesquite, Texas, went to Poteet. Was thought of as one of the best linebackers in the country because of that athleticism. And it also just it felt different for the landscape where Kevin Sumlin and AM seemed to have a lot of momentum. That seemed to kind of turn that a little bit when Malik said, you know what, I'm going with Charlie Strong. He is the leader of the 2015 class, and there's no question about it. He helped rally bring that class in by just his words, his behavior. He's got a lot of respect out here in the state of Texas for being a player that is hungry and humble. Oftentimes, when you find a guy that that's highly touted, their ego is the size of Texas. And Malik Jefferson, a young man who's come in, he's set some goals for himself. And let's be frank, let's be frank. We, we saw Jeff, uh, Vance Bedford say that he's got a long way to go. But when you see plays like this on a spring game, you know that things are starting to click. That was one of the best play defensive plays I've seen in terms of awareness, finishing the play with a forceful tackle. Those are the types of plays if you're Malik Jefferson, and they've moved him. He's played a little bit of middle inside linebacker when Dalton Santos went down. He's also played a little bit of the position that Nashawn Hughes and Caleb Blewett plays, where they move him all over the place. He's going to be a moving piece, and he will also be, in my opinion, a very valuable member of this 2015 Texas defense. Two tackles, tackle for loss. He has really lived up to the hype so far. And the hype. Gerard Hurd was huge coming out of Denton Geyer. Redshirted last year. And I was gonna kind of be working on what would be close to maybe a two-minute drill as we're 444 to go. But that's something that you can also work on in spring is we take a look at what Tyrone has been able to do today. What stood out to you? 
Well, he's thrown his deep ball on the money, and I thought his timing has been better, his location of where he's putting the ball at, but he just looks much more fluid as a passer, and um, one of the strengths of his game is his big arm, but can he be accurate? And then he's been very forceful also with his feet. Heard. Put something on that, and Lorenzo Joe. Wow. Showing some toughness. Yeah. Well, he's the uh, Dorian Leonard making plays. This is what competition does. Young man from Abilene, Texas, former quarterback. He's not running like a quarterback there. Um, bouncing off of DBs and getting extra yardage. Great competition between those two. Lorenzo Joe with a big catch there from her. Once again, play action. Just a quick little toss. Joe wanted to come over and get a block, but thought better of it. It's Andrew Beck came in as a linebacker a year ago and has shifted to tight end. Yeah, Tyler Marriott, the, the safety there for Texas, doing a great job of recognizing that play. Texas had numbers because they brought what you call a Cobra, cornerback blitz, and it left 41 on a wide receiver. He comes up and makes a fine tackle in open space. Back in motion. Another corner blitz. And quickly get it out to him. He read it. Lorenzo Joe. You say you got to read, then you got to execute. He definitely read that. And oftentimes, defensive coordinators like Vance Befford, who like the blitz, will bring it from the short field. The ball is on this half, and it allows that cornerback at the bottom of your screen to get home sooner. See how quick that ball has to come out. Great recognition by Hurd. Gaston Davis. You see Jake Rollerson, 50, the center. Is still building that depth on the offensive line. No! Heard. Finding his favorite guy, Ty Templin. Hey, stay off, stay off, stay off. Boy, a lot of waggles, a lot of trying to change the pocket. Well, it just allows Tyrone Swoops and Gerard Heard to be instinctual. If a play breaks down, they've already got some momentum and they can pick up yardage for this offense. Um, and it, what did it do just now? It chipped away the sticks on the third down. Now you have a third and short, which is ideal for this offense. Third and one. Flag it out there. And turf monster. Turf monster got yep, Mr. Exactly. Davis. <laughs> Gaston felt it. Yeah, that play uh, it was a conversion. They set up the right play call. Nice swing pass to get him back in the space. And unfortunately, just couldn't keep his feet. Fourth down, well, fourth down and two. A long two. Gonna give it back to him. It's gonna be close. O line doing some work. Yeah, yeah and, and, and at this point, you know, now it's just a matter of if you want to win your coach over, you be intense, you have the type of attitude at this point that's aggressive, and boy, can you win your coaches over. But in a situation like that, Ford and Short, they put the ball in the hands of a running back. They're really showing their confidence and the ability of an offensive line to move the line of scrimmage and, and to gain that first down. And bring out these sticks. It's it, a little bit short to me. I didn't know. Yeah, it does. I didn't know if we were going to have sticks out here today, you know? Well, it's a spring game, Kevin. Yeah. What'd you expect? Well, well, I knew we'd have sticks, but I mean, bringing them out. That is going to be short. <laughs> Ahmad still has those eagle eyes. <laughs> so does Sean Watson there. I mean, because if on your third down, you call the right play, and this is how frustrating it can be as a play caller. He, he calls the right play, and the guy loses his feet. Then you come back, and you're tempted on a fourth down. They were successful on their first fourth down conversion. Here they come back. They're stopped by a great um, effort by the defense. Jane's going to talk with Sean Watson at the end of this half. Sean, he's done spread before. Really at Nebraska with Taylor Martinez had to try and create an offense that fit that different skill set. Yeah, and now, I he asked laughed him. That said, well, Taylor, you know, <laughs> we threw it occasionally. You know. No, we were watching. You didn't throw very often. <laughs> Two thirty-five here in the first half. Pump, watch out. Nashon Hughes would have destroyed him. And also, let me mention here: this is one versus ones. This is good on good. So for for guys in spring, when you see um, 
the best competition. This is where you really shine. And there goes number 40, Nashawn Hughes. I mean, just completely blows by the tight end, Whitley. Mismatch there, Nashawn Hughes would have had the sack on game day. Yeah, that one would have stung. <laughs> Watch out. Almost jumped the route. Bryson Eccles. He is having a day. He is, and that time there, he benefited from having a young wide receiver. Watch Amarni Foreman coming from the right side of your screen. He just cuts his route short. You've got to continue to run through that ball there because that's where Tyrone Swoops was throwing the ball to a location. But give 15 credit, he had a great jump on the ball and a PBU after having a pick earlier in the game. PBU for DBU. Yes, it is. Swoops over the middle. John Bonney was on the coverage looking for Ja'Cory Warwick. And when Charlie said Petey, he calls Ja'Cory Petey. He said he's had a really solid spring. He has. He's been available for them over the middle of the field. That time there trying to work um, the proper angles, get in a space and sit there. And Tyrone Swoops, I thought, did a good job or a decent job at least of, of working his feet and still throwing on the move and putting a ball that was catchable. If you're Ja'Cory Warwick, You've got to have a large catching radius, and if a ball gets near you, you got to haul it in um, to still convince um, this coaching staff and your teammates that you will be reliable on game day. Mitchell Becker will let it go. Becker looks it off to Ja'Cory Warwick. Well, footwork was talked about ad nauseum, and for good reason on Thursday when we met with Charlie Strong, Vance Bedford, and Sean Watson. And Sean Watson has all types of different quarterback drills. How is this helping Gerard Hurd and Tyrone Swoops be more accurate? Well, according to Sean Watson, your eyes lead your feet. And to have to throw a good football, you have a good base. And Sean Watson starts off every practice trying to put these guys in a position where they have to feel their balance find it, he wants to make them lose it and then restore it and do exactly what Gerard is doing right now. Stand tall, make a throw. We've seen him do that a few times already mm -hmm. this spring game. But 13 has developed the most, in my opinion, as a passer. And part of it is, is his commitment to footwork and keeping his balance in the pocket. Saw him at practice last year, or even if you came out to the games and just watched him pregame, accuracy was a problem for 13. Almost intercepted there. Tried to squeeze that one in there to Joe. And nice play by Strickland, Jordan Strickland. 5'9 sophomore, number 43. Dangerous play, dangerous throw. He threw right into double coverage. And one thing that allowed the safety to get a jump, he, he stared down his wide receiver. One of the things that you see a lot of times, oftentimes out of a young quarterback. Second down and 10. Heard to Joe. And this is where you get into that two-minute drill, Ahmad, and this is where this is great experience for Gerard Hurd. Yeah, it is. Now, the pace with this two-minute offense doesn't change much because you have a high-tempo offense, but what now has to change is you've got to communicate, get the plays out so you're, you're being um, useful of your time and not wasting minutes and seconds that could be valuable in helping you score. And a glance over. Make a check. Four wide receiver set. Let's it go. And once again to Lorenzo Joe. Joe with some moves and able to get out of bounds. Yeah, you can clearly tell that um, these two young men have worked together before on this unit. That's a nice move there out of Lorenzo Joe. And Lorenzo Joe has been hearing all the people talk about Dorian Leonard. And I think at the start of spring, I think these two guys are still locked in a strong competition. And he's making some plays here on this drive. Under pressure. Just trying to throw it away. Now look, that may not look like a, a good play. But for a young quarterback, watch him here elude the pressure. Excellent job there, Vaccaro, of keeping it inside, allowing Bryce Control to get back and apply pressure and to get a hit on the quarterback. But it started with Hurd's ability to buy time, get out and make a smart decision. Most young quarterbacks, like Tyrone Soups a season ago, we saw, would have taken that sack. This time, he has the savvy and the smarts to get the ball out of bounds. Yeah. Vaccaro and Cottrell after him. 
Kevin's put some weight on, number 18. And pressure again, Malik Jefferson. He was coming after him. Cottrell, too. Bryce is... Bryce has shown he can get after the quarterback. Probably going to be his role this year. Yeah, I think so. You let this guy tee off on third downs. As I said earlier, he's a little undersized in comparison of Shiro Davis. And they play that, they both play that defensive end position. But uh, Vance Bamford said that this is a young man that hasn't fully recognized how good he can be. Making plays like that and doing some of the things that we've seen him do early on in this spring game will give him some strong confidence. Trying to set up the screen. They do, but. Nice job by Vaccaro. Kevin came in and made the play. We know the instincts are there with his brother. He needed to get bigger, though. Yeah, this is this is great pursuit here. It's just uh, a screen. They're setting up for the running back, and oftentimes when that play is made, it's usually coming from a, a member of the secondary who recognizes it, gets a good beat on it, reads it, and makes a play. And that time you saw Kevin Vaccaro get a good run pass key. He saw what was developing in front of him, and that allowed him to go make a play. 43-yard attempt by Nick Rose. Oh, had looked really good up until that, and doink. Yeah, and Texas field goal percentage last year was ninth in the Big 12, and and that's something after having Anthony Farah, um, just a model of consistency here a season ago. Um, this will be a major point because you've got to come away with points when you have an offense that wears down a defense and puts you in range to, to strike and to fire. Uh, Nick Rose in his senior year will be relied upon heavily to keep this Texas team in games, but also keep the momentum going by finishing off those field goals. Yeah, make, make the ones you have yes. to make. 43 yards, not easy. I, when I was growing up here and they were struggling a lot, this was kicker and punter you. That was it. Yeah, you had, it you, you had Phil Ward, Dawson, Chris Stockton. I mean, you go thing. through it. I mean, there's a list. Erksleben. Erksleben, Jeff Indeed. Ward was as consistent as any of them. Michael Pollock was a pretty good kicker, 90. Wayne Clements, Alex Waits, John Pouchin. Those are all Come on, man. Kickers going way until you roll the Well, no, here. I'm just told those are the only <laughs> scars we had. <laughs> that and Eric Metcalf, <laughs> right? No doubt. <laughs> Uh, he didn't kick, but my guy. He allowed a lot of people to kick extra points. Yeah. Earl Campbell. Two of my all-time faves there to the left, Johnny Johnson, who was um, inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame, and the great Mr. Earl Campbell. It's good to see him healthy out here watching. And um, when you come to university, the names like Earl Campbell are the reason you come here and the reason you exceed and you try to put yourself in a category even close to him. But uh, one thing I love about him was an excellent student, always sat on the front row and took full advantage of the experience here at the University of Texas. Yeah. Well, there's no bigger star in the, on the 40 acres than Earl Campbell. Sean Watson, he's looking for a star at quarterback. He is down on the field with Jane Slater. All right, Coach, we're finally seeing this up-tempo offense implemented in front of the fan base. What did you like from the quarterback play? Well, they're doing a good job of managing the tempo and doing a good job because they have so many different options on a play. Overall, they're doing a really good job of managing the options. Uh, you know, they're really actually playing pretty clean. We've had some uh, mistakes, that, you know, young mistakes, either at our position, quarterback, or one of the young guys. But overall, the first unit especially has done a nice job. Specifically, some of those mistakes, what are they, and how would you clean them up in practice? They're easy cleanups. It's just a matter, really, of slowing your mind down. You know, when you're going fast, sometimes, you know, younger guys leave out a pointed, you know, a little pointed detail. You know, it's an easy cleanup. It's just a matter of slowing their minds down, which I'm going to try to do here in a second. Nice job. Thanks, Coach. Let's go to Kevin Dunn. Shane, thank you very much. As now we go to Texas game day. Lowell Galindo and the guys. OG, take it away. Gerard will hand it off. Seen some nifty running. Not seen a lot of Jonathan Gray, as you've seen mainly Deontay Foreman. So Duke Cattle on, that's Deontay right there. That's against the one defense. You've got your horses in there, Hassan Ridgeway along with Puna Ford and Nashawn Hughes and Shiro Davis. That's your projected starters there on the front line. A little option. You ran the option at Abilene. And, and really, a lot of what we're seeing with zone read, it's all option principles. They've just changed it pretty much. But 
Do you feel like he has the the ability to make those type of reads consistently? I think so. I mean, I think his decision making is one of his strengths, and it'll be questioned throughout the this season in the Big 12 with speed coming off the edges and players in the middle of the field that that certainly will get a good read and make plays. Each team with 13 first downs. Third down's been a little tricky. They're going to try the option, but reverse Ja'Cory Warwick. Nice job by Nasha Hughes. Flag here on the field, but the tracking abilities of Nashawn Hughes. Now, he's given up some quickness and speed here to Ja'Cory Warwick, but watch him there on the right side of your screen. He'll come in. His shoulders are square, which allows him to play him inside or outside, and that little stutter move from Ja'Cory didn't do anything because he came to balance and he had proper technique. Uh, that was a good play there, even though um, it looks like there was a penalty on the defense, but Nashawn Hughes, uh, a uh, face mask. Um, Deshaun Hughes there making a, a, a very good play. Gerard looking down. Now he's going to go ahead and tuck it, getting back to that manage. Well, a guy who made life very easy on quarterbacks, especially a redshirt freshman, number 11, Major Apple. That would be Ricky Williams, and Ricky's down there going to join us uh, for the third quarter. Ricky, let's get let's get your take. What have you seen so far? I'm really enjoying watching these quarterbacks play. It, it, it's nice. I'm admitting it, Ahmad. I, I do like, <laughs> I do like the spread offense, and, and really bringing out the athleticism of these quarterbacks. I think yeah. it helps everyone. Do you think it's helping the running backs? I do, and and I think the running backs are, are helping the quarterbacks. Mm. And Rick, explain to people. I've been trying to explain this concept, but when you spread out the field, how does that thin out the box and allow people, um, the offensive line, to get hat on hat, but also the running backs to to create those spaces just on, based on your formation? Yeah, when you split receivers out, usually a linebacker has to walk out there, and it makes the count easier for the lineman. But but honestly, I think the. The, the thing that's going to help these running backs the most is the, the threat of a quarterback run because that extra guy has to keep his eye on the quarterback and creates more space for the running backs. The guy down there, Jamal Charles, was able to benefit. Not that he needed any help, but when he played with Vince. Some contact, no call. Ricky, you've been down on the field. What have you seen from the physicality of the Texas offensive line? They're getting after him. I mean, I think the, simplifying the offense a little bit for him with this, this spread look has really made it easy for him. They're running this, this counter play that, that the running backs have had success on, and, and I like it. I like the, the different wrinkles they can, they can uh, install with this, with this new offense. Ricky, how much did you play your senior year? It doesn't look like we've gotten too many glimpses of Jonathan Gray, but certainly been some good positive reps out of Foreman and Catalan. Yeah, I had to beg Coach Brown to keep me in for, <laughs> for one series. And no one was allowed to tackle me, so. <laughs> of course not. 49-yarder yeah. good from Nick Rose. Once again, no problem Here's with the Here's why you couldn't leg. tackle him, right here. <laughs> yeah, you couldn't tackle him. Now, Ahmad, you know, he was saying that you had those short arms, those T-Rex arms, but, it, but I'm, not, I'm not sure if they were trying to protect me or protect the defense. <laughs> yeah, so. exactly. The 1998 Heisman Trophy winner, two-time Doke, and uh, it was an absolute joy to watch Ricky run here, and Ricky, of course, first couple years as a fullback. Ricky, if you would have been a tailback all four years, I don't think Ron Dane would have ever gotten near you. I don't think so either, but it's a nice story to tell that, you know, I was a leading rusher in NCAA history, and I played fullback for two years. I think we're going to have a new quarterback. It'll be Logan. Is that going to be him? Yeah. Vink Loret. Didn't, didn't know if they were going to bring him in yet, and they are. It's his own read. Still going. Yeah, Ricky, you like that? I, I like it. I, I talked to Sean Watson yesterday, and he talked a lot about this triple option. The quarterback can give it on the on the read. He can pull it and run, or he can throw it out wide. It's a nice play. Yeah, it's almost impossible to defend because you've got to stay at home if you're a corner because they could throw it, but it creates a running lane also. Vin Clark. Jason Hall thought he had something there. It's Logan is a junior from LaGrange. Jason Hall, a guy who really hoping to have a breakout sophomore season. You said coverage is where he needs to get better. Yeah, and when you get your hands on a ball as a defensive back, I mean, literally, I can count the, the number of times that a quarterback just threw me the ball straight to my face five times yeah. as a player here. So when you get a gimme like that, you've got to take full advantage. 
you catch all those? Sprint draw. I did. Shiro <laughs> Davis. I really like this, this sprint draw play. They ran in a bunch in a, in a scrimmage last, last Saturday. I think they're going to have some big plays this year. The quarterback sprints out like it's a like it's a rollout. The running back takes a couple steps, gets the ball, and comes back underneath. It's this almost similar to the frog draw, which, which Fran so. did for This direction, no question. Nice Third. play by Shiro Davis. Yeah, really nice play by Shiro. Shiro's put some weight on. He's at 265 now. And Clark's just going to go ahead and eat that one. Well, Puna Ford is a name. You see 95, and Puna Ford's a guy who we kept on hearing that just having a monster sprint. Yeah, well, Vance Bedford said he's, he's one of the top three defensive linemen, not tackles, one of the top three defensive linemen. Puna Ford, um, the breakdown on him when you look at him, he's hard to block. He does a nice job of separating, and he's kind of slippery on the inside. Um, he just finds little creases. He gets through, and once he gets behind the line of scrimmage, he's got a he's got a knack for tracking down the football and finishing off football plays. And so I, I expect Puna Ford, even though Hassan Ridgeway and Desmond Jackson will be back, he will be in the mix and will get some valuable reps. Mitchell Becker with the punt. Jakari Wark takes the fair catch. Well, Jonathan Gray heading into his senior season last year, he admitted that I really wasn't 100% coming off of that Achilles injury. See what he's been able to do in his career and some highlights of really what he does. And, and Ricky, I know one thing that you love, you love his vision as we take a look at it now. I love his vision. I, I really love his feet. He had a couple, uh, couple jump cuts last year that were spectacular. Something I could never do at full speed. <laughs> you talked about it. Here it is, the balance. That's what allows you to do that. When you have that type of balance, you can get in and out of that, that um, jump cut, as he talked about, in leadership for me. The story on this guy, he's the first one to show up, last one to leave, and this year his senior leadership is going to be relied upon heavily. Tyrone putting a lot of air under this one, and he's got his guy, Ja'Cory Warwick. Petey with a nice catch. That kind of gets back to what you said. Sometimes he would try to be too perfect on deep balls. Give your guy a shot. Well, because the wide receiver runs a good route here and he allows him the space outside the numbers, that's what quarterbacks are taught. Throw it in that window outside the numbers and allow your wide receiver to run underneath it. Another a good ball on a fade that Tyrone swoops for. Nice play by Edwin Freeman. Came in. Edwin's got tons of talent, a lot of speed. Hey, Rick, I'm going to go back down to you. What what are you looking for for third from 32 in his senior season? What, what are your expectations for Jonathan this year? Well, I think Ahmad touched on it. Really, it's it's leadership. And uh, and it looks like in this offense, they're going to lean on the running game a little bit more, finally. And I, I look for him to take advantage of it. I mean, I really think he's going to have a, a breakout year and be considered one of the, the top running backs in the, in the nation this year. So you felt like way too pass-oriented last year? Yeah, I, I think especially considering, you know, all the questions at quarterback. You know, but then you come to the questions at offensive line, and I, hopefully those questions will be answered this year, and, and court, the coaches will feel more confident handing the ball off to the, to the running backs. Just going to flip it over to Foreman. All out blitz there. They went zero coverage. All DBs around. were locked up. They had a man, and Tyrone Swoops just beat him with a good decision and a good play call there from Sean Watts. First down, you see Malik Jefferson. Hey, see, they're bringing them. Numbers. I, I got to ask you, Rick, uh, obviously a lot of a lot written about Malik, but what have you seen down there from the freshman? Yeah, he looks he looks good. He's active. You know, I, I talked to Coach Strong about him yesterday, and he said he still has to learn to take on blocks and get off that way. But uh, but his athleticism, I think he can make up for a, for a, a lot of his uh, lack of experience. And he's productive. He, he's making plays out there. Yep. Mod. Super impressed with the hustle and the athleticism to get back on that screen on DeJay Johnson causes a fumble. That's six points. That's a big time play because, you know, they designed that play to suck the entire defense right. in and, and you see him. But here's some of the highlights this kid's been able to do. And here, separating the pass catcher from the football. Here, uh, not necessarily running his arm, but a big hit. And this was the play for me that did it. Causing a fumble, uh, reacting to a play as he saw it in play. Um, those are big time plays that lead to points for this Texas defense. And 46, we'll see playing time doing those types of things. We're seeing some guys flash here and guys that people have talked about. Edwin Freeman, Bryson Eccles. This should be a touchdown. No, out of bounds. What was out of bounds? Yeah, he had him, had him open there. Ricky, you're down there. Do you put more, you got to put more on that? It, it's a nice ball. That's, that's the receiver. The receiver's got to know where he is and, and make sure he stays in bounds. Left that's a good ball. Out. That yeah, was a good ball. You're right. 
Monty Foreman. Tyrone's thinking, man, I had one there. Well, that's a souvenir, and that's something that you want to see from both these quarterbacks. If it's not there, don't take a sack, don't take a pick, not a fumble, get rid of it. Situational football, Vance Bamford likes to bring the blitz inside the red zone. He forces quarterbacks to make a decision there. He brings another nickel blitz with Vaccaro, puts it in the face of the quarterback. Um, Swoops was looking for Leonard there, but he didn't have the time or the space to make that throw. Tyrone is four for six for 53 yards in this drive and almost intercepted. Strickland was there. He was looking for Dorian Leonard. And Jordan Strickland's a guy, a smaller DB, but he's done a nice job coming in here and obviously taking advantage of the opportunities. He has, and you know, though it was a good play, if you're Dorian Leonard, here's where you can become an impact player inside the red zone. You're a big target, you're 6'3". Yep. You've got to go up and be hungry and catch that ball over a smaller defender, especially when your quarterback shows confidence in you and goes to you on third down. It is good. Right. In there, so Nick Rose continues his pretty solid day. Only had the one miss off the upright. That was a 42-yarder. Well, we started the broadcast off talking about the 6-7 and seven season. Not what Charlie Strong, not what anyone associated with the 40 Acres wanted. But I think a lot of people may have been more shocked that after the Arkansas debacle, as Charlie and some of the coaches said, they were able to get a consensus top 10 recruiting class. We've talked about Malik Jefferson, Ricky, some of the other guys as we look at the Big 12 recruiting classes from 2015. Texas ranked ninth, Oklahoma 17th. And obviously all those are different, that's ESPN. But almost everyone had Texas in the top 10. They were the only team that were six and seven and able to do that, Ahmad. Yeah, and I think what it also says is that these guys think they can come in and play. If you're a highly tied recruit, you don't want to sit and watch. And so that class class was built on, frankly, an unsuccessful season from Texas in 2014. Ricky, I know that you did a lot of recruiting stuff with us. Who are you looking for to come in and to have an impact from that talented class? I'm looking really at the defensive side of the ball. I think at least we're going to see three or four true freshmen have significant playing time next year. Anthony Wheeler's a guy, Cecil Cherry, that linebacker spot especially, and Malik. You feel like Malik's probably a better fit on the outside. He's been forced to play inside because of injuries as Trey Holtz lets one go. Grandson of Luke. And I think the easiest place for these freshmen to come in to play is going to be at the cornerback and safety position. Um, as there's still a question mark on whether Evans will be out um, for the season. Reports um, are some unofficial reports from the university are saying he won't play next season. And so the thing is, is you've got to find guys that can cover to be able to execute a defense like Vance Bedford likes, get aggressive, utilize that blitz on third and long situations to put the pressure on the offense. Chris Boyd, Holton Hill, two guys who could maybe come in. Devontae Davis is a bigger yeah. guy who you think could come in and play. Well, they come in week week one as probably a, a too deep, deep in the right? depth chart. Yeah. And you heard Vance Bedford say that earlier this week in a press conference. Only well, Jefferson, enjoyed the bell cow, and as Ahmad said, the leader. Boy, Bryson Echols is... He has been all over everyone today. Yeah, he, you know, he reminds me a lot of myself. He's an undersized guy. He's not very big. People don't, or people aren't going to remember his name, but he's had an interception today. We've seen some PBUs in that time, just shadowing the wide receiver, Jake Oliver, as he tries to come in on a screen. And, um, you I don't know, think Trey's dad, Skip, would have liked that throw. I think he wanted him to get rid of that <laughs> yeah, Throw that thing out of bounds, right? Third down. Hey, Rick, you got anything else for us? Any last thoughts? Oh, well, yeah, I'll say the one thing to keep in mind is during the spring game, you know, these guys have been practicing against each other for, for a couple of weeks now, so they've seen pretty much everything. So, it, it, you know, you got you to gotta look at it from that perspective when you see some of the plays the defense is making, especially on some of these uh, wide receiver screens. We'll be tuning in to Texas Game Day Final. Thank you so much, Ricky. Thank you, guys. See Thanks, you big in fella. a quarter. Lowell, Ricky, David Thomas will have you set up. We played three quarters. It's all burnt orange.
just jump right into the most uh, the most interesting topic. Quarterback. <laughs> exactly. Quarterback. Tyrone was our starter last season. Jirai, we had a chance to redshirt him, but you know, going into the spring practice, that we're going to give him equal reps. We're going to let him compete. Tyrone was walking out there first. Jirai has made it a competition where it wasn't a competition before he's made it one. You look at the Texas quarterbacks today. Gerard Hurd, 19 of 26, or 152 yards. Tyrone Swoops, 16 of 27. He's gone for 118. Both guys have run for the score. On his let go, and it's a knuckleball. Corey Warwick will make the play. Well, a guy who had two pretty good quarterbacks during his tenure here, Vince Young and Colt McCoy, is with Jane Slater. It's Jamal Charles. Yeah, and Jamal told me that on Sunday he's getting ready to head back and start his eighth year in the league with the Kansas City Chiefs. How you feeling? I feel good, man. I'm, I'm blessed to be able to, to play another year. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to go out there and give him all like I've been doing my whole career. All right, we were just talking about the spring game. You know, it's an opportunity for a lot of these guys to show out to both the fans and the coaching staff. When was the one game you felt like you showed out in spring? I think it was my freshman year, my sophomore year, my junior year. I think uh, when you have an opportunity to, to show your talent, you got to show it, you know what I'm saying? No matter who's around you, you it, that's, when how, that's how everybody going to know you are you bright, you, you got something good in the future, so you want to break out. All right, let's talk about this new up-tempo offense. We've got we to watch where we're at here. This new up-tempo offense, all of you guys, the letter guys coming back, really talked about the speed. What have you noticed? I mean, being, uh, in, a, being in the lead now and Tim Kelly, you know what I'm saying, the Oregon Ducks do this and uh, do this all the time. And, and it's, it's, it's something that you got to practice for and something that you got to stay in condition for. And also, it's also something that the, the other team got to prepare for. So it, it makes it hard for the other team to line up right, to get in the right places. But it, it, it's, a, it's a, another advantage for the, the offense to also get the ball off in time and they know what to do. The defense, they, the defense don't know what the offense is doing. You know, we keep talking about how this system was really tailored to the skill set of both quarterbacks, Gerard Hurd, Gerard Hurd and Tyrone Swoops. Talk to me about the running backs. Yeah. How can they benefit in, in this system? I think the, how they benefit, they, they take away them opportunities. You know what I'm saying? It's spread out. You know what I'm saying? So when it's spread out, they, they, the defense spread out. The linemen, the, the, the linebackers, they spread out. So it, basically, you basically one on one with a linebacker and a free safety sometimes. So that's how you got to take advantage. You you don't like being tackled by three guys. So I'd rather be tackled by one guy and try to, try to make him miss it and try to go to the house. And that's this that's what the offense, uh, just the offensive of scheme is about. You know what I'm saying? Making one guy missing going going to the house all right jamal charles take it to the house in your eighth season we appreciate you joining the show oh, thank you <laughs> guys back up to you jane thank you he had no problem taking to the house I, I, actually during that interview i was just thinking about that nebraska game when he that fourth quarter he just took off and just dominated the whole yeah. game really a fun guy to watch as you see jordan strickland talked about him earlier the sophomore from aurora he's had a pretty nice game here He's a smaller guy, and if you're looking at some of these defensive backs and safeties that you're hearing their name for the first time, look for them in the fall to contribute on special teams. Mm -hmm. Special teams for Texas last year was not good, and I think the coaching staff will tell you that. Third and seven. We're just going to go ahead and eat that one, as he should. That's Quincy Vassar, 92. One of those early enrollees. Another early enrollee we have not talked about that I really wanted to get into was, talked about him a little bit, but Connor Williams, the 6'5", 290-pound offensive lineman from Coppell, only played offensive line for one year at Coppell, was a pretty good athlete, grew into that body. What are you hearing about his chances to really make an impact next season? His attitude. He came in here as a guy on a mission. <laughs> you talk uh, to the upperclassmen, they said you couldn't tell if this guy was a freshman if you walked into the facilities. He's doing all the things he's supposed to be doing. Uh, they've put him out there, put him in situations that ha are pressure packed, whether it's been him running with the ones, he hasn't batted or blinked an eye. And when a young player is going to come in and contribute, if you're like Connor, what you've got to do is you've got to show the older guys you're not scared. You're not intimidated by the lights. And 55 has done that. He will be a contributor on this offensive line. He gives them some depth and could potentially be a starter week one opening up in South Bend. Wow. Starter at tackle. Yes. As a freshman. Yes. Hmm. He's been that impressive. Yeah, they said he is a standout. 
Jimmy Greenwood's going to be the new quarterback from Austin. Well, getting back to the offensive line, to Tristan Nicholson, number 75, 6'8", 317 pounder. He's a guy who they feel like could maybe give them, at least give them some depth. Also, Brandon Hodges, number 58, he's a junior college transfer. Do you expect to see these guys on the field next year? Especially because they came in this spring. And one of the toughest things to learn in this offense is the verbiage. And I understand you, um, the checks at the line of scrimmage. And so once you have that, if you're a good, talented athlete, you're well on your way um, to being an impact player. Grayson Eccles is just trying to get He's another everywhere. one. He <laughs> is. He has been everywhere. 25 Antoine Davis was another name they said that they feel like he's kind of taking that next step. Look at some of the recruits that will be coming in. That was just a nice job of getting underneath and throwing his hands up. I mean, the kid has great ball awareness and a ball hawking skills. Third down and 10. Davis getting pressure on him. And there is Antoine Davis. Take down. He's playing for Jay Norvell, the new wide receiver coach. Jay's going to have some freshman talent coming in in the summer. And we've seen some guys make some plays today. Ball on the ground and Puna Ford all over it. Well, three new coaches for Texas. There is Jay Norvell, the glasses on. Jeff Trailer came from Gilmer, tight end special teams coach, and Charlie didn't, he didn't uh, really hide from it. He said, oh no, I was getting a high school coach from East Texas, so I got the best one. And obviously, Brick Haley came from LSU, but here's Jay Norvell's career resume. He played at Iowa under Hayden Fry. And how many coaches played for Hayden Fry? That's quite a tree there. Ten seasons as an assistant, did have six seasons as an NFL assistant coach, including doing a lot of work with Marvin Harrison with Indianapolis, then was an offensive coordinator. But when you look at him as a defensive back, you see the way his receivers run routes. You really like what kind of technical coach he is. He's also an author. He wrote a book he on is. the art of wide receiving. And, and I, I'll be frank with you, he's a technician. He's a perfectionist. He demands for his players to go out, not take a lazy step. If he tells you five yards, foot pointed inside, get out of his break, that's what he's expecting. So he's really, um, the expectations that he's brought here as a technician, I think has really elevated these young wide receivers' ability to do things right. And nothing against Iglesias or Broyles. They're talented guys, Travis Wilson, but they were talented, but you saw it every, all four years at the Cotton Bowl. They seemed to get better and better and better and really became just precise route runners. Yeah, he really focuses on the fundamentals at practice from what I've been able to see. Um, they really dive into the important parts of being a wide receiver. And there's a receiver making a catch. 88 tied Templin. You like this ball? I do. Once again, little play action there, doing a nice job. You see his eyes early on in that play look up to the safeties to try to identify, and then just the nice touch to get it in that window on that seam route to the wide receiver right over Malik Jefferson's head. Yeah, over Malik's head. Hand it off there. Here are the receivers that are returning from last season. Marcus Johnson not playing in this game. And, yeah, Jonathan Gray, he was one of the leading receivers for Texas last year from the running back position. Armani Foreman, also Ja'Cory Warwick. we got Dorian Leonard, Lorenzo Joe, and then some kids that will be coming in. There's Dorian Leonard. But the competition, you get the sense, especially talking to Sean Watson Thursday, that you talk about it a lot, the competition on the offensive line. It's really helping out a wide receiver because guys, guys are pushing each other. You can get lost pretty quickly now. I won my job in 1999 in the spring. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't play much. Matter of fact, I didn't even letter my freshman year. But uh, the guys that are going to be contributing, oh, just a little bit out front there. He had the space, though. Um, 
and you'd like to see that ball on the corner thrown more at the back pylon instead, and I'll show you what I'm talking about here to give a little air under it. But once again, nice timing on this throw, and I think Sean Watson would be um, would be pleased with his balance there, and he knows he just misses um, the touchdown there to the wide receiver on a nice corner route. Nick Jordan's going to come in now. Jordan, the junior from Coppell. Texas ninth in the Big 12 in field goal percentage. Not good. That is good. 11 players have at least two catches today. It's been fun here in Austin. We'll be back. Texas football on Longhorn Network is presented by Schlotsky's. We're lots better. And in part by the new Chevy Silverado, official truck of the Texas Longhorns. Texas and Notre Dame, two of the biggest names in college football history, I will venture to say. Certainly both in the top five. We look at the Longhorns' 2015 schedule. They start in South Bend September 5th. You go through, what else stands out outside of the obvious ones? So take away October 10th. What are the games you looking at? Well, at TCU, uh, two years ago, it was a tough environment to play in, though Texas came away with the victory. And at West Virginia, um, obviously playing in Morgantown, but the Oklahoma game always. But at Notre Dame, that is just a beautiful place. I remember going there on a recruiting trip, and it's almost like walking out on the Lambeau Field. The history and the tradition just grabs a hold of you as soon as you walk into that stadium. And so I know for these Texas players, that is going to be a very special moment for them. He played Notre Dame in the 1978 How do you do, Kevin? I'm sure you know. He had over 100 okay, yards, and the Chicago Tribune headline, I still have it, says, the Irish shut down Campbell. Okay, I'm sure. Yeah, okay. That, and that really was. <laughs> Notre Dame won the game, but that was that shows you just how freakish he was. And now in the NFL, if you get a you get a hundred yards, you're going to the Hall of Fame. <laughs> a nice pass. Expect to see these then, routes along the hashes from this Texas offense. That's where the wide receivers are lining up, and it really puts some strain on those safeties to be able to cover, and it opens up the middle of the field. Watch out. Logan trying to get away. Cannot. I'm going to give it to him anyway. And you see these defenders, some of them are saying, hey, I, I touched him. It's like, no, let, let him play. Let him play. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if you'd have had him there if you're Alex Norman. Um, could have taken a better angle, but give the quarterback credit for being elusive enough to, to buy some time. And Clark showing that he can move a little bit. All right, 140 to go here. Give me some takeaways. If you're a Texas fan watching this at home, are you more optimistic? Are you less optimistic? What are you fired up about for the fall? The new look offense was the storyline, in my opinion, coming in. It's a nice contact there on the outside edges. But to see this offense now look for ways to get the quarterback involved with the run. I know people that watched game day last year and me and Ricky and Vince argue on set. It was because I just felt like they, we, Texas was not giving itself the best opportunity by not letting the quarterback run. And mm -hmm. so I think this is a system now that, that, as Ricky said earlier, now forces defense to be concerned and to account for a running quarterback. And though Gerard Hurd does it with a little more speed and quickness, and Tyrone Susan does it with just ball and physical presence combined together, I expect these two guys to really give this offense a boost in this new offensive system. Uh, you know the secondary so well. Are you, I know you may have been a little concerned about the secondary considering who you lose and who Texas lost to graduation. The injuries right now, still not sure about Sherrod Evans. What did you see today from the guys on the field that maybe makes you a little happy? Great effort, and I thought that was the major difference that you saw last year, besides the fact of seeing a guy like Malik Jefferson get some valuable spring game reps. But um, at times in the 2013, the 2012 season, uh, the defensive unit um, put up the worst numbers in the history of Texas football in, in terms of defensively, and part of it was lack of effort and energy. And you're starting to see that now, even with young players, and I think that's something that Coach Strong, Vance Beck, Effort and this defensive staff preach and watch and certainly grade every day in practice. Well, that's going to do it. A, another fun one as Smokey signifies it's over. Vance Bedford smiling a lot more than he was earlier. 
final, Texas 27, the Longhorns 16. But we saw some good things from the quarterbacks, and there's no question the story and the question marks for Texas are Tyrone Swoops and Gerard Hurd. Thumbs up on both of them up? Yeah, I, I thought I saw enough today to be for it to be a promising year on offense, and you still got to learn how to work this system. But I think both quarterbacks made plays today to keep the competition moving forward to the fall. And speaking of competition, I think that's why you saw some of these quarterbacks at their best. You'll see here with some of the Gerard Hurd highlights, you see him using his feet. Every highlight you see today was with him moving yeah. because that's what he's good at, and this coaching staff has recognized that. Once again here, throwing the football on time, putting it in the right location, and then here the score, the burst. The acceleration and the athleticism of 13, which has closed that gap there at the quarterback position. How much of the constant waggles, constant sprints, so we saw 18 and 13 almost every play in shotgun and almost every pass play, some type of play action or some type of trying to get him on the move. How much of that do you think turned into them really showing that they can throw the football? Because we've seen them in other offenses and the accuracy was not there. sure that the eyes of Texas gets in there but really talk about the offense here that you saw the quarterbacks and, and really the kind of how that's going to lead into the spring or the fall I think the players are energized now they look at their offensive numbers and know that they were 106th in the nation with 21.4 points a game that won't cut it no you're not going to win championships and maybe not even games there so they're working they're improving and they're seeing a new look here uh, for our great crew we're done here. Let's go down to Texas game day. Lowe, take it away. 